Hello, you're watching the Ideas Factory, and I'm Nakma. On this episode of the Ideas Factory, a quick look at what all are we going to discuss. Of course, top of the mind is the U.S. drawdown from Afghanistan, and then President Biden's speech on the U.S. drawdown. Uh, what does it really mean, and what does it convey about the U.S.'s role or the diplomatic efforts that will continue probably in Afghanistan, as the U.S. administration has pointed out? And what would be the Russian and Iranian influence in the Afghan peace process? And where, uh, uh, what really? Is India expecting from countries like uh, Iran and uh, Russia because uh, the foreign minister has uh, has been on a visit to both these countries? We will look at some of those topics on this episode of the Ideas Factory. A very warm welcome to you, Harsh. And uh, I would uh, like to begin this discussion uh, by the uh, talking about the U.S. drawdown from Afghanistan and now President Biden uh, saying that they were not in Afghanistan for nation building, and he has given a final date. And they say that they are on track. 31st August is the is the final date for the drawdown. But there are a lot of uh, criticism and opinions coming out. And uh, it is also said that this decision of total drawdown was as good as accepting defeat at the hands of the Taliban with whom you were fighting for the last 20 years. And now his speech almost seems like uh, you know, an, a defensive effort to rationalize the drawdown when the whole the violence is increasing every day a lot of uh, afghan forces especially the pilots have been targeted uh, the taliban have declared that they have captured about 85 percent of the territory they've announced that in this situation and there's also tension on the tajik uh, afghanistan border so this it's a reason for worry for russia as well uh, how do you first look at these comments coming from president biden uh, thanks, Nagma. I think very strange speech in some ways because it was neither, uh, you know, about uh, saying that, look, this is, this is what we have achieved, uh, or nor it was about rallying a country uh, around a certain uh, idea of what uh, America may or may not have done in Afghanistan. It was largely, I think, driven by a certain sense of domestic fatigue in America, uh, you know, which we, which we know has been the primary um, lens through which American policymakers have been looking at the Afghan question right from the days of Obama. So, for, you know, Barack Obama wanted to do it, but he couldn't. Um, and uh, he was uh, led into a surge by his military advisors. And then, of course, Trump came and Trump declared that all is ending, but he, he also could not complete uh, the withdrawal. Uh, but now you have Biden, which, uh, you know, which uh, perhaps there was an expectation in the initial few months uh, that he would, uh, yes, he would withdraw, but he would withdraw more strategically, uh, that there would be some strategic reassessment of the requirements on the ground. And he would calibrate the withdrawal based on that. But I think what he has done is he has used a certain momentum of his initial months in office. Uh, and he has just pulled the plug uh, from around uh, fr from Afghanistan. And I think that leads to a whole host of negative externalities for Afghanistan. Uh, and I would say for American foreign policy as well, because it reduces America's credibility around the world. It also has certain negative implications for the region. Uh, so clearly we are now in a phase where every single uh, you know country in the region is recalibrating uh, and is looking at uh, afghanistan through a prism of uh, what is happening right now and as you mentioned right now things are not looking very 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 good the taliban is uh, expanding furiously because the taliban feels that they have won you know they have they've defeated uh, the most powerful military machine in the world uh, and they have made them withdraw before the timeline I mean, americans uh, you know there was a sense about mr biden himself said september 11th uh, then it became uh, august uh, uh, end and now we know that almost all the american forces are gone and the way i think the, the departure from bagram base is also reflective of an underlying ease uh, unease uh, within within Washington as to what is happening in the ground because they knew that if they had declared and gone perhaps it could have led to more violence and perhaps demands to stick around so I think you know the the, the, the optics are not very good for America uh, and for Taliban of course this means that they can capitalize on this and they can send out a message uh, to everyone that they are running the show and Afghan government of course is waiting from the sidelines uh, Afghan security forces are doing what they can and, and in some cases they have been fighting very very strongly but clearly they do not uh, have the support of, ma of a major military power like America that they had for a, uh, till a few weeks back. So they are, uh, you know, they will eventually uh, feel the pressure of this of this reality. But 
clearly what we are looking at now is a very uh, rapidly uh, deteriorating situation on the ground and for the regional countries therefore it becomes imperative to f to figure a way out americans have gone their domestic politics perhaps dictated that they will uh, you know that they will leave uh, and they have left much before their timeline uh, but clearly they have no plan b and that plan b is what is needed the the taliban clearly have a definite uh, plan but the way the afghan government is now at a loss and seems to have no plan really how to take over also the way uh, the us forces left the bagram air base the commander in chief the afghan commander in chief got to know much later and now the taliban is targeting the us nato trained uh, pilots uh, especially targeting them now uh, it's really going to be very difficult for afghanistan now but when america promises that it will continue to support afghanistan what do you think or can us still re influence afghan politics or in what ways now that the forces are gone uh, to to stabilize the country and uh, you know for a sovereign uh, or a legitimate government to take over uh, can america really assist or will we see the influence still there i think it's very difficult now you know once you have said that we are not interested uh, from the military side uh, and that's the you know violence has become the key instrumentality now on the ground for taliban it is the use of violence and through the use of violence achieving political aims is now the primary uh, mode of operation and in that context if america says well we are not fighting and we have we have, we, have, we, have, we are out of the uh, out of afghanistan then their role in the political settlement in the process of political settlement uh, becomes very very difficult to ascertain uh, because at the moment uh, you know uh, taliban and afghan government of course of sections of the afghan government have been having conversations but when when the taliban are aware that the afghan government is at perhaps its weakest they do not have the support of their most important partner most powerful partner then of course uh, you know the, the negotiations become lopsided so the political structure that will emerge will also be lopsided and taliban because now they you know as as uh, you know there is no way to ascertain how how much control they have over taliban they say that they are controlling 85% but uh, you know but but it it is clear that they are controlling a large part of of afghanistan and they have momentum on their side uh, who are the allies of the afghan government who can now stand up and say well we will we are with you and we will fight it out no one is willing to fight it out you know all the regional players also uh, are now looking at a at a settlement with the taliban so clearly the position of the afghan government is very weak and they are very vulnerable to all kinds of pressures so the negotiations will be one sided so the political settlement that will emerge will be one sided and taliban will have a very very important role to play if not the most important role uh, in in the kind of political structures that would emerge and so the question I, yeah, yeah so, so the question is what happens to those uh, who are uh, you know who who have opposed taliban what happens to to the minorities uh, the, for what have put up as women's rights what happens to the constitution of afghanistan that was uh, you know that was accepted uh, and that uh, on the basis of which uh, afghanistan has tried to come out of post 9/11 uh, you know stasis so i think those questions remain and there is no clarity at the moment absolutely a lot of refugees um, on all borders are uh, probably i mean especially that the tajik border and elsewhere a lot of people trying to get out of the country all those people who have opposed the taliban and their the way they function and the way they rule it's a it's a difficult situation for afghanistan right now and at the same time harsh the intra afghan dialogue is taking place in iran which iran is hosting uh, and interestingly foreign minister jayashankar made a stopover in iran and he uh, met the uh, president elect uh, elect raisi Uh, in fact he was the first foreign dignitary to call upon the president elect and now india has also been invited for the swearing in uh, of the new president uh, while this afghan intra of uh, intra afghan dialogue is taking place there how do we understand iran's role there and uh, i mean what the taliban the dialogues are going on should in india has of course accepted now the question is that uh, who will go from india for the swearing in but how do you uh, see this well i think uh, you know uh, uh, in afghanistan india uh, and iran and russians have been traditional partners in the 1990s that was the troika that uh, you know that stood up to 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 to, to the advances of pakistan backed taliban so uh, there is an interest there in in reigniting the the, the engagement in re, in, in uh, because clearly the, the the prism through which they look at afghanistan are similar uh, 
you know they they uh, they are shifting they are changing they are evolving but still there is a large degree of convergence uh, in the way new delhi uh, moscow and tehran look at what what is happening in uh, in afghanistan and as you point out uh, in in tehran of course there is a new dispensation that is about to take take power and for and for them it will be you know this is going to be a big challenge because as as we know what is happening on the border uh, uh, iran is very worried about all the refugees that will emerge from the that will come through the border uh, into iran similarly central asian countries are very worried and uh, we know what is happening in uh, along the border with tajikistan and russians are worried that what happens in central asia will have a direct bearing on what happens in russia so there is a larger reality of the regional players looking at this question of afghanistan uh, through their own prism because they they eventually have an interest but their interests are also relatively narrow compared to america for example which had a broader uh, you know uh, eye on afghanistan all the other countries have limited engagements on a limited range of subjects uh, in, in particular border stability they would want stability at the border and interestingly taliban is assuring everyone uh, from iran to um, to uh, russia that look uh, it, they are going to be res very responsible in the way borders are managed etc etc of course it's uh, something that's beyond their control as well uh, but it is interesting the way taliban has evolved it is interesting the way taliban themselves are saying that they have evolved uh in some cases uh, uh they are pointing out that look internal affairs even in india in india's case they have pointed out kashmir is not something they are very bothered about domestic in it's a domestic indian problem uh again this is contra pakistan they were they are also saying that uh, you know uh, xinjiang in china uh is is china's internal problem and and they would they are welcoming chinese investments in in in, in uh, afghanistan so i think at the moment Taliban is reaching out also to these regional stakeholders and uh, the question is whether these regional stakeholders including India Iran Russia can they work together to come to a common framework whereby they can you know they can settle uh, at least partially some of the questions that are, that are arising in the wake of american withdrawal at the moment it looks a very very long haul uh, precisely because no one uh, would be willing to take the leadership no one would be willing to shoulder that burden that americans were shouldering for a long time uh, of ensuring uh, basic minimum security and i think those are the questions that no one has answered yet yes there is a there is some kind of an engagement happening all countries are uh, you know bringing in taliban and uh, factions of afghan afghan government together as to what is happening in iran russians have hosted them before uh, even chinese have hosted them uh, but uh, in in turkey of course is also there but i think the larger reality in afghanistan is one where different actors have divergent interests and unless those interests somehow converge even in, on domain specific issues uh, it's very unlikely that we will see a region wide uh, solution and it is precisely because of this that india is investing in this outreach that india uh, jay shankar was in iran he was in russia to create a common framework of understanding if uh, taliban or if uh, afghanistan is to remain relatively stable after the withdrawal of american forces uh, of course like you pointed out uh, india is trying to reach out of course the divergent interests are right now not really coming together uh, it's difficult because the interests are uh, i mean china's interest there and india's interest uh, you know the china tilt is a big factor to russia's china tilt too will probably uh, have a role to play here but jay shankar's moscow visit was dominated by afghan concern india has seeked russia's help in um, you know in creating in in, in a in a in a sovereign and stable afghanistan but uh, to what role really can russia play here in fact one of our viewers have put forward this question to um, his uh, name is panshul mishra and he has asked about a similar question that uh, in the afghanistan crisis what role can russia play and is there any possibility of reviving the northern alliance uh, and what can india's role be here also keeping in mind the china tilt in terms of russia we will yeah you know now as i said uh, we uh, we had a certain relationship uh, in the 1990s now that relationship can't really be uh, revived uh, under the present circumstances because relations have evolved india's relationship with russia is now in a, at a different stage but the uh, as i think uh, dr jay shankar mentioned during his visit that geopolitics uh, is something that remains static you know that, that in some ways geopolitics is a constant geopolitical engagement with um you know, with uh, uh, russia 
uh, it has been one of the reasons why, uh, despite the differences, Russians and Indians have been so keen on managing uh, this, this very important relationship. So I think what we are going to look at now is uh, for uh, India and Russia to look at this question much more keenly and acutely. And Russians are now who will be hosting next week the SCO summit uh, on, uh, on on Afghanistan, and which is going to be an important marker as to where uh, SCO, uh, how the region, Central Asia as a region looks at this question, because from from Russian perspective, that's the most important. Uh, issue emanating out of the uh, American withdrawal and uh, chaos in Afghanistan. If uh, Central Asia is not stable, uh, that is Russia's periphery, Russia would be very worried. And Russia is indeed showing that it is worried. And therefore, some kind of an engagement for Russia is also important, uh, uh, is important in the Indian context, that both India and Russia need to look at their own peripheries and assess the, uh, the significant damage uh, that with that is that the chaos in Afghanistan can do to their interests in their own peripheries, and I think that's what uh, the conversation is about. And given that historically India and and Russia have seen uh, Afghanistan through a similar prism, there is, there are possibilities that they can work that arrangement once again. I don't think a revival of the kind that uh, of Northern Alliance of the kind that that happened in 1990s uh, is a possibility. But certainly, uh, India's uh, role. Uh, India's engagement with certain stakeholders in Afghanistan remains very substantive. India's uh, co ability to shape uh, those relationships is much more robust today, let us also remember, than it was in the 1990s. India is today uh, a reasonably important player, not only in, uh, in, in Afghanistan, but also not only in South Asia, but also in larger Indo-Pacific. So clearly for India, uh, you know, the, the 1990s is not going to be the metric. It's going to be what our Indian in Indian interests today and how they can be protected, if that includes uh, Russia and if if there is convergence there, which there is to a limited extent, then that should be uh, engaged with. Then, then that should be pursued for Russia, of course. Uh, whether Russia is willing to look at uh, its interests in Afghanistan beyond just the China question and, and the Pakistan question is something that India would be carefully watching. And there are indications that Russia. Uh, has balanced China and India in its uh, in its relationship so far uh, in its in its security strategy also that was released uh, recently. Uh, Russia has tried to manage India and China, tried to create a balance between India and China. Its engagement with both countries. So there is there is hope that potentially as uh, the externalities emanating out of Afghanistan become more and more clear and uh, more and more categorical. Uh, Moscow and New Delhi will find new ways of engagement. And that is what Dr. Jay Shankar's visit perhaps was laying the foundation for. And that also comes before uh, Indian Prime Minister and Russian President meet for a summit later this uh, year. So. so I think that is also going to be a very, very important conversation, especially pertaining to what is happening in Afghanistan. Absolutely. Jay Shankar's visit was laying the foundation for the summit also that's going to take place and how uh, the two countries can come together on, uh, along with other matters on uh, the issue of Afghanistan. Uh, Harsh, there are a couple of questions which are actually almost similar. You've answered the question, but let me just uh, put it to you. Manoj G has also asked a similar question. They all talk about the China and uh, Surya Pratap Babar, who's been a regular viewer uh, for our show, is also uh, asking something similar. Manoj is asking if uh, if China enters Afghan politics through BRI infrastructure policy and if Taliban engages China, China definitely uses this as an opportunity to counter India and helps Pakistan. How should India face the, uh, this challenge? I mean, how should India face the Chinese uh, challenge? And also, um, Surya Pratap has a point here that India has lesser comprehensive national power than China and India isn't aligning with either USA or, or the camp which is China led. How then should India proceed to safeguard her interest in an era of coercive diplomacy which is followed by China? So these are the kind of questions that the China factor is important and you know the camps that are here in the region. You, you've answered uh, on these lines but if you would like to add something to that. Yes, very briefly. See, China factor is going, you know, is a persistent theme now across all our neighbors. Afghanistan is not going to be different. Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, 
but let us also remember that in Afghanistan, uh, even uh, for the last several years, China has promised much but delivered nothing. You know, they've been talking about BRI investment, uh, 100 million, uh, etc. They've been talking about, uh, you know, uh, copper mines, uh, you know, in, uh, but that has nothing, you know, that has not materialized. So on the ground, really, China has not delivered anything on the, for, for Afghanistan uh, in terms of capacity building, in terms of development cooperation. They've talked big numbers, but in terms, in, in, you know, the reality has been that they've been very cagey because they, they you know, they're, they're unwilling to put their money where there are no returns. And in, in Afghanistan, of course, uh, given this uh, evolving security situation, the returns, uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, they would have they would have had difficulty in, in, in managing those returns. So they have been uh, very, very cagey in engaging in, the, in that respect. Now, if uh, Taliban, of course, now wants to, uh, has, has uh, openly suggested that they would be willing to protect uh, Chinese interests uh, and therefore this China should come and invest. Well, if China does that, uh, uh, certainly it, it is most welcome to do. But the question is whether China would do that given its past experience, not only in Afghanistan, but in also in other conflict-ridden spaces where China has been very reluctant to involve itself. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they are very cagey about investing in areas where they feel that they're, they're unlikely to be any significant returns. So whether they would do that uh, remains to be seen. Of course, uh, they have talked about uh, BRI, for example, CPEC extending to Afghanistan. They have talked about uh, a Chinese investments in uh, in various uh, in, uh, infrastructure projects. They have talked about Chinese investments in various mining projects. Uh, but again, as it all depends on how Taliban govern Afghanistan, if uh, the present trends continue if Taliban being uh, Taliban, uh, you know, the kind of governance structures that they are presenting today uh, you, through sheer use of violence. Uh, I don't think Chinese would be very interested. They would largely rely on Pakistan to do their bidding uh, and they would uh, do speak uh, much but uh, deliver little. And my sense is that so long as that continues, uh, so long as the situation in Afghanistan doesn't stabilize, Chinese role in Afghanistan would remain relatively limited. The question is, uh, are other countries willing uh, to come to Afghanistan's aid and what shape that aid would look like? Because at the end of the day, even if Taliban are the most important part of the political structures emerging in Afghanistan, they would need significant amount of aid to manage and govern Afghanistan. And that's, uh, you know, going back to the first question, Nagma, that you raised, that is some leverage that international community, that America, that the West and, and that India still continues to hold. If Afghanistan, if Taliban are indeed interested in governance, if Taliban indeed are interested in improving the lot of the Afghan people, then for them, political structures, their role in the political structures uh, should be a means for better management of their relationship with other neighbors. If that does happen, there is a future. If that does not happen, then I'm afraid we are, uh, you know, we can go back easily uh, to the chaotic uh, days of 1990s, uh, where Taliban, uh, where, where Afghanistan. Uh, would yeah. be uh, bitterly divided and where, Afghanistan, where ordinary Afghans will feel the brunt uh, of the devastation and destruction. And the ordinary Afghans are already, have already started feeling the brunt as the U.S. Uh, drawdown uh, is almost complete. Uh, like you said, the countries, all the regional players, the countries need to come together uh, and uh, actually come out with a formula how Afghanistan can be more stable, which is right now under a lot of turmoil and a lot of increased violence uh, we are witnessing over there. So that's what we have time for. But thank you so much, all of you, for sending in your questions. Thank you, Nitin Sharma, Sachin Bora. We haven't been able to take all the questions as they're also, uh, you know, they talk of different topics. But today, since we were focusing on Afghanistan and the region, uh, we've taken the questions related to this topic. So we will take in more questions next week on different topics. But thank you for watching and sending in your questions. Thanks a lot, Hash.